advised that you are approaching a submerged vessel on your starboard side. Please continue to watch for debris as you enter the harbor. So there's a car underwater here somewhere. Can you tell Mark to slow down here? This is where we started having a lot of trash. Yeah, pretty interesting. Lots of wrecks, like a maze coming through. Okay, we need some bumpers, guys. Let's get bumpers. There's the dream and the reality. I mean, it's just these people are living a nightmare. They're, it's two years in and they're still living in a chaotic world. We're in the Abacos, which is a group of islands in the Bahamas where the hurricane hit the hardest. Hurricane Dorian sat on top of the Abacos for 36 hours, just with horrendous winds. When we visited in 2019, and we saw the level of destruction, it is so hard to comprehend. People's lives scattered to the wind. It was one of the most emotional times in my life. Hurricane Dorian had such a massive effect on these islands. I cannot even begin to imagine how traumatic it was for the people who were here. Somebody's house. The effects of climate change are escalating around the world. And we came back to tell that part of the story. I really wanted to be surprised in a pleasant way by the recovery effort. What you realize is that two years is not enough. What I was not expecting was what I saw in the mud. This was a settlement where 7,000 illegal Haitian immigrants lived. And the last time I was here, this part of the island was apocalyptic. All you could see were the footprints of where houses used to be. And these massive containers carried here by the storm, they destroyed everything in their path. I lost a lot. I lost. I lost a lot. I lost a lot. It's all been so thoroughly clean, there's nothing left. You would have no idea that there were lives there, that people went to work and they went to school and even though they are illegal immigrants, you know, they're still humans. And, you know, that was a message that said, do not come back here. One of the reasons that I really empathize with the experience of the immigrant is that I'm an immigrant myself. You always face that moment when you really don't belong. People here have told me that at least a thousand people died just in the mud. We'll never know. It's easier to forget them. So let's not. James was born here in Marsh Harbor. And we're looking now at the dump site of everything that was broken by Hurricane Dorian. It's definitely shocking. I mean, it's as far as your eye can see. And this is my friend's houses, my somewhere in here, my mom's house, my dad's house. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not easy. You know, there's a hurricane coming when you leave the house so quickly that you don't even take the laundry out of the laundry machine. baby girl sweater. Imagine the panic of a mother trying to take her children out of a flooding house. You wonder, you know, that they make it, that they escape with their lives. Most of the devastation that we react to is on land because we are terrestrial creatures. But so much of this debris ended up in the ocean. And Mermaid Reef was no different. And I remember diving it with just a sense of dread, thinking, how are we going to clean this up? So the fact that the community came together and they have been diving and snorkeling and cleaning, not just the reef, but all the marine areas around the islands is amazing. Mermaid Reef is not the same as it was before the hurricane, but it's getting there. 
when I jumped in the water, I could tell that most of the debris is gone and that the fish are coming back. They actually created an organization called Idea Relief, and they are diving all over the Abacos, cleaning up this mess. We are just scouring the harbor looking for debris. So we got sheet metal, roof metal, you name it, we see it. My hope is that we can inspire people to donate to that effort, to come and volunteer. You know, there's work to be done here. The fact that people are willing to help gives me hope. I love, love, love coming back and being able to find the landmarks. The leadership to rally everybody for a common cause was palpable, and it shows. There's no single hurricane on this planet that is just a problem for a country. Dorian is not just a problem for the Bahamas. The wildfires in California are not just a problem for California. Climate change is a problem for all of us. If we become immune, then there's no hope. We really have to remind ourselves of what's at stake. And you can see it here in the Abacus. People are working, they're determined, they're full of hope, and they're gonna be okay. Our work here in the Bahamas has been so valuable, but now it's time for us to continue on our voyage. To avoid a 30 to 40 knot incoming system, we need to make it down to the Panama Canal. That is about 1,000 miles. If we lollygag, we're going to get our asses handed to us. My guess is it might be a three.